Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And welcome to Mena First Assembly. We're sure glad you're here this morning. Everyone, if you're visiting with us, we want to give you a, a great big Mena First Assembly welcome. And uh, we just want to welcome the Spirit of the Lord here this morning. Amen. 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 If we come together, if we come together and 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 we don't don't uh, encounter the Spirit of the Lord, it's just it's just a waste of time. Amen. So we're we're here. We want the Lord's. We want to be led by the Spirit this morning. Amen. Can we do that? Every one of us, not just up, us up here, but I want every one of us to pray. God, let, help me be led by Your Spirit this morning. Can we do that? Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the goodness that you you bestow on us that you give to us every day god god every morning every morning your mercies are new lord we thank you for that lord help us lord this morning lord just to enter in enter in in praise and worship this morning god prepare our hearts to receive your word this morning god we thank you for what you're going to do those that are sick of their body we ask you lord just to move in on that behalf lord any situations that may be, may arise god you are the answer we thank you that for what you're going to do this morning touch each one of us this morning touch those that are joining us on live stream we thank you for all what you're going to do in jesus name amen amen, amen. everybody say glory down at the cross where my savior died
he set me free yes he set me free he broke the bonds of prison for me i'm glory bound by jesus to see God. Step out of your seats. Greet someone this morning. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah.
family and I have been um, battling a situation in our family. My brother has schizophrenia. And um, if you know the gentleman at the depot, that's my brother. He's homeless. Um, it's been very difficult because when you look all around you and all you see is fire and you're surrounded by it and there's absolutely no way out and you're struggling and then you pray and God tells you to wait let me tell you how hard that is because I'm the big sister and I'm supposed to take care of my siblings and when I had to put those hands that I need to I want to fix, I want to fix, I want to take care of I want to protect, I want to make sure he's okay I want to make sure he's not cold I want to make sure he's fed but I'm not God I'm not God, I can't be God and so many times we try to fix the situation when God's telling us to wait wait, wait let me be God let me be God if you have a situation that you're facing today and it seems absolutely impossible without an answer in sight. Let God be God. He's very good at being God. He's been God a long time. He knows what he's doing. Amen. Step back. Let his spirit lead you. this morning to be a part of a church that believes Amen. in the yeah. power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When all hope's gone, we still have the, the power and the presence and the promise of his word. Amen. When things look impossible to man, nothing's just impossible with God. The Holy Spirit's leading, and we have an agenda. We have an order of service. 
But guess what? <laughs> the Spirit's leading. There's some here this morning, like Mary, that said, Angel, what are you talking about? This is impossible. This is too big for me. I, I can't do this on my own. On my own. Guess what? The angel says, You don't have to do it on your own. You are not alone. You have the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. When you don't even know how to pray, he'll intercede and give you the words to say. <laughs> Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father and he's interceding on our behalf. Some of us have come this morning with needs. Let's just let the Holy Spirit lead and let's continue to sing this. And if you tell me, Holy Spirit, to lay it down, then I'm coming right up here this morning. And I'm going to lay it down, and I'm going to leave it here, Amen. and I'm not picking it back up again. Amen. I'm going to leave here different because the Holy Spirit's been working in my life. Come on, let's be obedient. Let the Holy Spirit move right now. If you say it's wrong, yes. then I'll say no. Come on, let's be obedient. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say to jump, I'm diving in. And if you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. You're the only truth, the life, the way. I'm done chasing
such a power in letting go and letting the Holy Spirit do the work. I spent years grieving over the loss of relationships with some of my children because of drug addiction. And I didn't realize that I was in such a state of grief. It was dwarfing all of the gifts that God had put in me. It was dwarfing the ministry that God had for me to do. But I'm telling you, the minute I let go, does that mean I don't love my children or I'm not fighting for them? Oh, buddy. Like I've said before, it ain't going but one way. And that's the way God said. But the peace and the power of the Holy Spirit that comes when you let go and stop trying to fix it or be God. How arrogant of us to think that we are capable of doing what only God can do in a person. That is not our job. The Holy Ghost has been around a hot minute and he's real good at his job. So if your pride is stopping you from receiving what God is trying to do for you this morning, then hang on to it because it's still not gonna go nowhere. You're still gonna be in a state of grief or suffering or pain or turmoil or fear or whatever it is. You're still gonna stay in that spot and the situation still isn't gonna be able to be moved. So let go of whatever stops you. Because I don't know about you, but there's only one thing that I need to hear from my father. And that is well done, my good and faithful servant. You didn't let your pride or your fear or your arrogance stop you from fulfilling the plan that I have for your life. Now I look at all of you guys out here, my brothers and sisters in Christ, our visitors, brothers and sisters in Christ, and I see so much potential power. We can change the face of this planet. We can start right here this morning. The good thing about the mercy and grace of God is it's new every day. I don't care about yesterday. We can't go back. We can't change what we even done yesterday. I can't change the past, but I can do something right now in this moment that I'm in. Now, I don't care. Some of you have physical issues. Some of you have relationship issues. Some of you have financial issues. We all have our own things that we deal with. And not one person's issue is less painful than another's. But today, this morning, pain is pain. This morning, you can receive a free gift. I am willing to stand for you on your behalf. I was standing back there and I feel like I've let things go. I searched myself. And the Lord said, but you can go up there for them, for those who aren't able to let it go yet. So I stand for you because I believe my father and I believe He's got great gifts and anointings and power that he wants to use you to, to, to change the planet. Brady, God's got a great plan for your life. Amen. And for that little boy, Amen. he loves you so much. Amen. I'm not trying to point you out, buddy, but I love that kid right there. And I can only tell you it's because God showed me some things. right in line with what you're hearing now. God would ask you, is his arm too short, short to save? Can, can he, is anything impossible to him? And the answer is no. The answer is no. And today is the day of salvation. That means today you can be healed. Amen. Physically, today you can be healed emotionally. Right. And more importantly, today you can be healed spiritually. You can accept yes. Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. But today is the day of salvation. Don't delay don't delay. God can do the impossible. Praise the Lord. Amen.
how do I find myself in this spot right now? <laughs> oh, Spirit, lead me. <laughs> you may be seated, and the Holy Spirit's going to continue to lead us throughout this service. And uh, we've, had, we've had a busy week this week. Uh, Friday night, we were part of the parade here in town. And uh, I was walking around before the parade because... I like to watch all the floats go by and get the candy and everything. So I thought, I'm going to go around and just look at what's around here before we take off and uh, see what everybody's doing. And it was, the theme was um, Christmas throughout the ages. And so people were, they had old cars and different things that they had decorated with and stuff. And, and uh, I came back to our trailer and I found Christy and we walked off together, and I said, Christy, as I look around, I, I, I found out that we're the only float that has kept Christ in Christmas, and, and I said, we're staying with the theme, Yeah, Christmas throughout the ages, he always was, he is right now, and he always will be. Jesus! Hallelujah! <laughs> I was like, we kept Christ in Christmas, and I was so excited, and others had made comments. I'm sure glad that not only were we singing Christmas carols and, and handing out candy, but Jesus, the Savior of the world, was riding on our float. It, it was an awesome time. And uh, then uh, Saturday, yesterday, we uh, went up to Van Buren to our mid-season uh, junior Bible quiz tournament. And um, when we started, started this out, talking to Pastor about it in the summertime, Pastor, can we get some quiz seats and lights so the kids can practice buzzing in and, and we'll get the material and we'll have them go to these meets and things. And we were all excited about it and we were telling the kids and, and some were wanted to be a part. And they have three different age groups. And, and if you don't quiz up, then, and there's only one person for your age group, then you can't. He can't be in it. So you can have four, four uh, quizzers on your team. We have two quizzers this year. And next year, we're going to have at least one full team, and maybe uh, one team for each division. And, you know, um, Christy and I, we can't do that alone. So we'll need some volunteers to be coaches, and we'll tell you how to do it. This is so rewarding, not because of medals or trophies only, but our kids are getting God's word in their heart. They're memorizing it, and then they speak it, too. They're speaking the, the word out. And, and uh, the innocence of a child, they'll just they'll go up to a coach or a school teacher, and they're like, do you know Romans 8.28? And they're like, no, do you know Romans 8.28? Yes. And then they, we know that in all things God works for good. I mean, they just rattle it off. And... Uh, and so it's exciting. And, um, and so we went uh, yesterday, and uh, this mid-season uh, tournament, they, they, kept, they called off the top five individuals at the end of the quiz. Do we have a picture of the top five? Uh, there they are. Now, I, I just got to give you a little bit of background. The number two in the green right there, his name is Prince. He is on the number one team right now. They're the number one team. <laughs> he's on the number one team in our district, and he is, he's amazing. He'll, he'll interrupt before the question is, is asked. He'll finish the question. He'll give the answer. He quotes memory verses just like he's reading it. I mean, it's amazing uh, to watch him and to listen to him. Um, and so... They have four quizzers on their team, a full team. We, we only have two. And so they have more of a chance. I mean, they're, they're going to get more points having more kids on, on the team and stuff. But we have, had a strategy that we tried to work, and we, we worked on really memorizing those scriptures and getting the 20 and 30-point questions instead of just doing the easy 10-point questions. And Mina, First Assembly of God, lost to the number one team by 10 points this weekend. Yeah. 
by 10 points. So I'm telling you, they're first place right now, but it ain't over, baby. <laughs> it ain't over. Um, these two right here are uh, our quiz team. They're like, are you sisters? You kind of look alike. And so, yeah, but we're not twins. We just dress alike, look alike. And um, so let's go back. Let's go back to uh, the team again. And, um, and I'll try. I've got my brain in my pocket. I'll pull it out here. I think it's Gabby on the number five right there. Nope, Juliet had 250 points for the day. Uh, and Gay, uh, Gay, is that Gay? That's Gabby, or I think. Yeah, Gabby. She was fourth place with 300 points for the day. Nikki was third place with 370 points. Wow. Nikki, come up here. <laughs> Yeah. Prince had 425 points. Come here, baby. <laughs> and um, Paige was first place with 440 points. <laughs> uh, now, listen. This girl's mama is like a military drill sergeant. <laughs> Have you studied your quizzing today for 30 minutes? I mean, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. It don't matter if it's Thanksgiving. Have you studied your quizzing for 30 minutes? Okay, but, <laughs> I mean, she's on them all the time. But not only that, but uh, they want to learn. They want to do, do well. And, and so Paige, this past week, she's like, man, we got a chance. She set her alarm for 5 o'clock in the morning and is sitting on her bed <laughs> reading the Word of God and memorizing those questions, memorizing those scriptures. And um, <laughs> it's not a sinful pride, but I'm proud <laughs> of these two little girls. <laughs> so is Jesus. And... Um, you know what? One of these days, dad's going to have to let go. <laughs> and they're going to go out in the world. <sighs> and I can't be there, but the Holy Spirit that we've been singing about, he's going to go with them. And he'll lead them. And they'll have that foundation, that biblical foundation that they can stand on, that they can apply those things to their lives. I don't want that just for my little girls. I want that for your boy, for your girl, for your grandchild. I want them all to know. And you know what? Not only do they uh, do scripture uh, questions, but they have questions on the doctrine of the assembly of God. And so they're learning what, what does our church believe in? You know, and they, they, so it just tells them about, you know, that we believe in two ordinances, the, uh, with the baptism, total immersion, right? Baptism, and we believe in communion, and they share with them what the bread means, what the, what the, the cup means, and then the Holy Spirit again <laughs> that we've been. Do you have a verse on the Holy Spirit that you could share with us? I think you do. Could you share that? Acts 1 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. All right. Good job. <laughs> and Nikki, I think you've got a verse you'd like to share this morning. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Yeah. Thank you. You can be seated. <laughs> hey, let's just have you stay up here because uh, we're going to have all the kids Come up here. Hey, buddy, what do you got there, man? Today is BGMC Sunday, which is Boys and Girls Missionary. What is it? Oh, 
Buddy is in the Christmas spirit, I think, here. Yeah, look at it. Buddy has a candy cane for everybody. Oh, my goodness. Okay, BGMC, Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge. And so we collect change. If you don't know, we collect change every month. And we bring it in. And uh, boys and girls come up here and get a bucket. We're going to have the boys go out. And the girls so far this year are ahead by a few hundred dollars. And so uh, this is your chance, guys. This is your chance, boys, to... Uh, to pass pass the girls up. So come on, get these buckets and let's go. Let's go get the change. And we're going to change lives around the world. Change and change. You see, yeah, yeah. Change lives around the world through our missionary offering. Amen. Good. 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 Here you go. Here's another one. That said girls. There's a boy one. Here's a boy one. No, that's a girl. That's plain. You get either one in there. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Awesome. What else going on? <laughs> uh, oh, man. Woo. If, if Buddy passes you up out there without a candy cane, make sure you see Buddy or his barrel after, <laughs> after church. <laughs> There you go, Russell. Yeah. All right. Good. Pastor Ron. If you love the Lord this morning, shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you love the person sitting next to you, shout amen. amen. And if you love Pastor Ron, say woo-wee. I thought he was fixing to call the hogs there for a minute, I'll be honest with you. You know, uh, this, uh, I know we have fun with, with uh, BGMC. You know, you're making a difference in lives, so. Uh, BGMC's been going on for a long, long time. I know every organization, uh, you know, denomination and fellowship, they, they've got their own thing for touching kids, but we, we have this, and we've been being a part of this heavily for a long, long time. What's our, do we have our total, Brother Tom? Do we know where we're at right now? Sister Judy may have it up there. Besides the girls are winning. Buddy has spoken, the girls are winning. And, uh, but anyway, do we have, Rhonda, do you know uh, what our total is? Thank you. Okay, all right. Uh, but anyway, we, I think we usually gather in around $3,000 and change. Uh, of course, it's not only change, it's, it's dollars and dollars and checks. And, and, uh, but anyway, I, I believe the guys are going to win today. Somebody going to go count, going to go weigh that and let us know before service is over. Yes, 20, not counting this month. So not counting this month, uh, the boys are, are down about $400. Who said that? Who said that? Uh, man, empty your pockets, huh? I, I'm tempted to sway that number just a little bit, but I probably shouldn't. But I will, I will say this, Eddie. If I have a hundred dollar bill in my pocket right now, and if there were two other guys that had a hundred dollar bill in their pocket, or something of the sort, and I had a hundred dollar bill in my pocket, it would be a chance for us to catch up. But I don't know if there if there are two other people that have hundred dollars they want to give to BGMC or not. But uh, Eddie's digging. He's digging deep. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. He's got a check. No. No. Somebody could give to the girls. <laughs> Look here. Uh, Sister Rhonda, make sure Eddie gets credit for this. Here's boys, 
No, I feel like I'm another auctioneer this morning. I don't know. Do I get a pie out of this? I don't know if you get a pie out of this or not. My, my, my. Is this for boys? No. Girls? We got to give the girls to whoever's. That's the girls. I will mark that down. Okay. This is boys right here. This is, this is boys. This is who's? I can't tell you who that is. Okay. I don't know where it came from. Okay. That's, okay, give Sister Rhonda, make sure and tell her it's for the boys. Here's a hundred. Okay. This is, we surpassed, surpassed the 300 for the boys. Look here, Sister Rhonda. This is, I know you need a pen for doing this. That's from Brother Lindell. Who said cheat? Who said cheat? Uh, lives are being changed. Yes. Amen. Lives are being changed. And so thank you. Again, we, we have fun with this. We've never done that before, I don't believe. And, and some of the... I don't know, all of a sudden the guy's got a lot of money and the girl's got some money too. I don't know how much, but, uh, but anyway, so it's a good cause, yeah. Yeah. You know, everything just goes back to the faithfulness of God, the goodness of God, and that God has a plan that's far beyond our knowledge and understanding sometimes. We look at what's going on in, in the world today, and I, I, I just see a lot of things changing right now, and I see a lot of things changing here in America right now, and I'm hearing these athletes and various people talking about God and, and Bible sales. I understand it's making the news across America. Bible sales are up. Uh, more, I believe, more than ever. Is that right? Y'all help me out there. And uh, to first-time buyers, first-time people to read the Bible. And so I, I just feel like something's stirring. We, we, need, we need revival in America. We need hearts to be changed. And so I, I'm just glad to be a part of what God is doing. I really, really am. It's good to be in the house of the Lord every Sunday and every day we're here. But uh, this, this month, I just sensed back some time ago, and Brother Rodney, can you bring me down just a smidgen, please? Uh, this month is the, uh, what I just felt God stirring me uh, a while back is the month of hope. Uh, we're, I, I think God says there's hope. There's hope for America. There is hope for you. Um, uh, you are valuable to him, and he loves you. As a matter of fact, he loves you so much that he gave his son. Amen. I don't know how many of you have kids, but, you know, it's, it's, you can't imagine the idea of someone giving their son, giving their child for someone else. But God gave his child, God gave his son for you, Russell. God gave his son for me, and for Justin, and for Marvin, and for, for, for everybody here. God gave his only begotten son, and so he's worthy today. He is so, so very worthy of our praise. Amen. But uh, share hope with somebody in this season, and uh, one of the things that we do is uh, to share hope uh, in kind of a fun way, but also a serious way as we provide gifts to all the children in church, children and youth, and also uh, we always try to cover all special needs people in church, and so uh, it's good. It, it's very, very good. So on the, on the 22nd for our Christmas service, we'll have uh, all sorts of presents under the tree, and, and by the way, thank you to Linda Denton who decorated the tree. Didn't she do good? Yeah. Well, that was very, very pretty. Yeah, Brother Justin helped put that up, and so Brother Justin had to have some long arms to get, get that star up there on top, but thank you, Brother Justin, so. Yes. You all hand me a microphone, please. 
I also want to remind everyone that December the 11th, this Wednesday, is our Christmas banquet. So if, if oh yes, food, fun, fellowship, it's going to be great. We will, 6 p.m., yes, we will transform this auditorium into a banquet hall. Banquet hall, a Christmas banquet yeah. hall. And if you haven't signed up your family or your friends or yourself, please get with me after church and I'll get you a ticket because we're going to put it in the uh, silver container back there and we will have some drawings mm -hmm. for some children. We got some children's gifts and we got some adult gifts and some teenagers, I believe. There's some. We try to cover all the ages in case we don't know whose name we're going to draw out. So we may draw... One of these little ones out, and we Hopefully make sure be we have some. my name that gets drawn. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> Is your name in there? I don't think your name's in there. Is your name in there? Uh, you may have pulled my name out. <laughs> and um, also, what, it's, I'm sorry, it's going to be good. And I know we're getting a little bit full already, uh, but we want everybody that can come to this. We want you to come. Absolutely. And we want you to bring somebody with you too. Invite somebody. They don't have to go to this church. Invite somebody to come with you. And uh, it, it's going to be a good, good time. If, really. And if you are, that would be wonderful. Please but make contact sure me, text me, and that you get remember. the names to Sister Rhonda. Yes, please. Uh, we want everyone to have a place to sit. We want plenty of food and plenty of tables yes. and chairs. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, um, one last thing. Um, on the table going out on the left, we have a couple of stacks of NIV Bibles, brand new, free to whoever wants them. If you, want, if you need one. And you think, I don't have that translation. I'd like to have it because I like to use different translations when I study. Or if you know someone that doesn't have a Bible, please take those when you go out the door. I would appreciate that very much. We want to get them into the hands of people that need them. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh, you don't Let's go that. back to, to there. Um, did we, Brother Lindo, did we take up the offering already today? All right. Ushers, would you come real quick? And uh, we're going to receive our tithes today. Thank you for your faithfulness in that area. Thank you for being kingdom builders. Uh, when, when we give, we don't give just to cover budgets and such. I, I hope every time we give, we give in faith, believing for lives to be touched, for people to be born again. You know, you, you see these kids up here today, they're... Uh, they're our future. We hear that, but we need to do everything we can to reach them. You see, by the way, where's, is Avery up here? See, Avery, she's joined the praise team. Yeah. And so I love seeing yeah. our young people get involved in this and that, and, and uh, it's good. Adults, you know, young adults like me, and then older adults like Ray, you know, it takes all sizes, ages. It takes every everybody to to build the kingdom. It really does. And so, but thank you for being such a big part of that today, Father God. Thank you for your goodness. Pray, Lord, right now that you would, in these moments as we receive this offering, we pray, God, that your intended purpose would take place. Lord, our our heart today, our hearts, my heart. Lord God, is that you would touch lives, that you would, Lord, just over and over and over be introducing people to your son, Jesus Christ. And Father God, we thank you for that. And Lord, we pray your blessing upon the offering today and we give you thanks for it in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's just sing this song. You are Alpha. And Omega, we worship you, O oh Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Let's just sing it to him this morning. Can we sing it? Sing 
that again. You are Alpha and Omega. The first and the last.
worship you, God. You're worthy, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you. Bless the Lord, someone, this morning. Thank you, praise and worship team. Don't you appreciate the praise and worship team so, so very much. We're going to dismiss Kids Church at this time, and so give them all a great big hand as they're going out today. Let's jump into the Word of God this morning. Let's go to the book of Exodus. Let's go to the Old Testament, Exodus chapter number 13. I want to have another message on this series that I began several weeks ago on the blessed life. I hope you understand that your life, according to God, is, is to be blessed. And I, I hope that everyone understands that. And the, the price that was paid for our ability to be blessed was Jesus Christ. He was the price that was paid. And so the perfect, uh, without sin, Son of God, He gave His life. The, uh, man didn't take it, He laid it down Himself. And so part of what, came, what comes with that is that you and I, as God's people, we are very, very blessed. So let's look at this this morning. Um, I, I know last week we talked about tithing and everybody was so excited about the subject of tithing. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. I, I made a statement last week. Bless you. I made a statement last week that probably shocked a few people, but I'm going to refer to that again. I said that tithing is probably one of the most one of the most exciting subjects of the Bible. Tithing and the the heart having a heart for God and we, of course we've talked about that for a few weeks now. I, I don't know well I, I do know why the subject of anything that deals with money no matter if it's in church or if it's at Walmart or whatever. How many of you complain about the prices of, of cheeseburgers these days? Yeah, I, I mean, because why? We work for our money. And so then we become very attached to our money. God's called us to be free. God's called us to be free. I, I, I'm not saying this for any reason except uh, for the sake of illustration, but um, this past week, all of a sudden, I'd pulled out, our, our updated church app. I don't have really time to go through that right now. I want to make sure. If, if you need help setting that up, see Craig Cohen, wave at us, Craig Cohen over there. And uh, he says no, but see Craig Cohen, and he will help you set that up. Um, but anyway, I, I was just trying out the new, the updated app. It's just a new version of the same company. And in the process of that, I thought, well, I'm just going to send a benevolence offering in. And so I did that. So I just went through and clicked benevolence. I, I don't typically give to benevolence, even though it's on our app, it's on our website. But, but I thought, I, I'm just going to give this. So I, I just sent 100 bucks to that. And, and anyway, I, I thought, you know, it's so good to be free, to just do something, to be generous, to do things. And and again, God wants us to be free. But, but anyway, last week we've talked about tithing, and I, I know I've shared some of these things before, but I, I've seen over the many, many years of being at this church and the many, many years of being in ministry, I, I've seen a little bit of everything probably when it comes to the subject of money in church. I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff. I've seen people that would uh, receive something and they would quit church before they would tithe on it. And then I probably didn't give the names, maybe I shouldn't do this even today, but 
Uh, I even, as I shared with you recently, I even had the one time where on a day where snow was heavy on the ground, it was slick, people weren't traveling much, but it was so bad we couldn't have church. And so anyway, all of a sudden, here comes a pickup pulling, I believe it was a pickup pulling up into the driveway on that snowy Sunday morning when we couldn't have church. And it was Lyndall and Bonnie Lida. And I know I shouldn't call names out today, but they drove all the way from, from Akron to bring their tithes to get it in the storehouse. And, and uh, what's that? Probably needed them, Probably needed them you know. And, uh, but I, I'm just saying that, that was not out of obligation, I don't believe. That was a matter of the heart. And Sister Bonnie probably really got him the whole way for being out in that kind of weather. I don't know, but... But they were on a mission, and, and so, again, it's a, it's a great subject. But the question really is today, and I know I've got to hurry, is who's first in your life? God, Jesus. We, we say that, yeah, who's first in your life? And, and so we always talk about that. We, we say God's got to be first, and family, and then everybody else, and, and everything else. But, but who's first in your life? And so we're going to get into this, and I, I know if I... Uh, if I took a little poll today and I said, okay, who believes God is number one in your life? About 99% of the people in church would say, yes, God is first in my life and, and uh, everybody would be happy. But then if, if, we, if we took the pastors and the deacons and, and the Sunday school teachers and, and we, we really got... Uh, all the parishioners, everybody in church. Now I'm meddling just a little bit now, y'all bear with me. But if, if we ask everyone in church, ministry leaders, everyone to bring out their checkbook or whatever they're using uh, to see who's number one in their life, I don't know if it would still be 99%. Yeah, I, I lost everybody right there. I lost everybody. But I'm, I just want you to know today, this is not a sermon, uh, this is not a message because this is something that pastors have to preach. It's something that we ought to want to preach. We ought to want to teach. Today is more of a teaching than anything else, more than maybe what we could call preaching today. But I'm telling you, this is a subject that can transform your life. I uh, I've, been, I've been a tither for a long, long time. I don't do that just out of uh, obligation, even though I, I happen to get, I get a bill in the mail basically from the district, so I, I have that that I send in every month. But, uh, but anyway, I, I don't do that though out of obligation. Now, I will tell you that I used to, I used to do that because I thought that's, that's what, I mean, I had to do. But something changed over the years, and back several years ago, I realized that tithing wasn't just an obligation. Tithing was an opportunity for blessing in my life. Tithing was an opportunity for God to bless everything that I, everything that I have, everything that surrounds me. You say, well, preacher, are you just overrun with money and overrun with lands and houses and cars? And all? No, I'm not saying that at all. But I will tell you today that uh, here's what I believe personally very, very strongly when we have a heart for God and when we give to God uh, faithfully, when we do that, I believe that God just takes care of everything. Yeah. Romans 8, 28 is part of that, yes. It, uh, all things work together for good. Now, there are times when you don't see things working together for good. You've got to trust the system sometimes. Yeah. You've got to trust the system. You've got to trust the Word of God that God is going to come through for you. Amen, somebody? Can I get a witness in this place today? Amen? But I know I'm a preacher. I, I, I know, yes, I'm a pastor, but I'm more than that. I am a believer in Jesus Christ. Amen? I, am some, I, I just believe we've got, to be, uh, we've got to be brothers and sisters in the Lord, and that's what I, I put my pants on one leg at a time just like the rest of you, just like everybody else. So we'll get into this, but when it comes to the concept of tithing, Again, I used to, I'm going to use this big word here, I used to pay my tithes. And we, are, we all can use words in different ways, but I used to pay my tithes out of duty. 
but now I give and I bring, I bring my tithes and my offerings to God in faith. Again, I used to pay them out of duty, but now I bring them to God. So I told you that a few weeks ago that it's a matter of the heart. Jesus said this. He said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So my treasure today is found in one place. It is found in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. That's where my treasure is today. So let's look at Exodus chapter number 13. If you haven't, uh, turn there if you haven't already. And this obviously is just after the Exodus. This is just after God delivered his people out of Egypt. Let's go to verse number 2. And this was a principle that they had to learn back then. And I realize we've got Old Testament, New Testament, but we don't have old God, new God, as I've told you. But uh, this, when we get this right, I believe it brings us into a, a new dimension of freedom in our lives. We are called to be free people, amen? But he said, consecrate me, consecrate to me. This is what God said in the book of Exodus. He said, consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever opens the womb, we'll talk about firstborn, first fruits today, various things. Whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, God says, it is mine. Strong words. God says, it is mine. In other words, it's sort of like he's saying, this belongs, it belongs to me. Move on down to verse number 12, that you shall set apart to the Lord all that opens the womb, that is, every firstborn that comes from an animal which you have, the males shall be the Lord's. But every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, and if you will not redeem it, then you shall break its neck. That's tough, isn't it? There's a truth here that a lot of people, they never get during their Christian lives, and that is that the firstborn must either be redeemed or it must be sacrificed. The firstborn must either be redeemed or sacrificed. So I, I want to try to share this in a way, in wisdom today, because I don't want to confuse uh, you this morning that, yes, we're dealing with Old Testament practices uh, but the principles behind the practices haven't changed. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen? So the firstborn was the Lord's. It was set apart to God. And if the firstborn was an unclean animal, it had to be redeemed or it had to be bought back. Otherwise, according to Scripture that I read to you a minute ago, it had to die anyway. Now, wouldn't it make a lot more sense to redeem it rather than to just have it die. To me, that makes a lot more sense to redeem something, amen? And Jesus must have had the same sort of thinking going on when he gave his life for you and me, that you were worth something, you were valuable, you were worth saving, you were worth, you, I hope you get this, you were worth, Ryan, you were worth Jesus Christ giving his life for you. You realize God is a personal God, and so every one of us, he loves us that very much. But the firstborn was set apart to God. And this principle runs throughout the Bible. One of the reasons we don't understand tithing is because we don't understand this truth, as a matter of fact. But hundreds of years, I know everybody gets hung up on the law. Hundreds of years before the law, this was still a principle that was taking place that we now have in the Word of God. As a matter of fact, if we go all the way back to Adam and Eve, we would see the very same principle. God says, you have all of this, all of these trees. It's all for you except for that one. He said, you can't have that one. So I wonder sometimes if God was basically saying, that one is mine, that one is off limits. But Adam and Eve, we know, failed that test miserably. And so we, we look, though, back to our text today. If the firstborn was a clean animal, it was given to the Lord as a sacrifice. If the firstborn was unclean, it had to be redeemed or brought back. 
Now, just a thought today. Let me ask you this. Prior to salvation, were you and I clean or unclean? Prior to salvation, were you and I clean or unclean? Unclean. Jesus, on the other hand, was he clean or unclean? He was clean. Why was he clean? Because he was always without sin. He never sinned. So I want you to watch this today. The clean was sacrificed, talking about Jesus Christ, so the unclean, talking about us, could be redeemed. The, the clean was sacrificed so the unclean could be redeemed. Otherwise, our destiny would have been death. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave... He presented his only begotten son. If we want to talk about something that's personal to God, we could talk about first fruits and we could talk about firstborn. Now, let me show you something today. God didn't wait to see, God didn't wait for us to, to see if we would make it without being redeemed. Understand today, he gave Jesus first because you weren't going to make it any other way. Amen? Scripture would tell us while we were yet sinners, Brother Jamie, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I would venture to say that none of us would have that sort of mindset. But Jesus was given, he was presented in faith, I believe this today, knowing that there was a world that needed redemption, and it's called mankind. Jesus was presented in faith knowing that there would be a return, and that return was found in your salvation and my salvation. Amen. Somebody give God praise today, if you will. <laughs> Jumping back real quickly to the subject of tithing, don't just do it because somebody told you to. When you tithe, do it in faith. Amen? Amen. And by the way, talking about a return here, knowing that every area of your life is affected by that in a positive way, amen? So don't tithe out of fear either. Let me just say that. Don't tithe out of fear either. That is legalism. Amen. Tithe out of faith. So the firstborn had to, either, had to be either sacrificed or the firstborn had to be redeemed. If you gave God the first, all the rest would be blessed. Amen, somebody. So we read in Exodus that if you don't redeem it, you shall break its neck. So if you don't redeem it, you're going to lose it anyway. What a, what a principle there. Any first thing given to God is never lost. You may want to write that down. Any first thing given to God is never lost. Any first thing not given to God is always lost. So the firstborn either had to be redeemed or sacrificed. Now let me share another truth with you today, and I'm trying to hurry. The first fruits must be offered. Did you know that Jesus is referred to as the first fruits? Paul said this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said, but now Christ is risen from, I love this right here, but now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Amen. Amen but each one in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, afterwards, afterward those who are Christ's at his coming. I don't know if I'm going by, the way, by way of the grave. I don't know if I'm going by way of the rapture of the church. I'm not real sure exactly when I'm going to go, but when I do go, I know that Christ has already made a way for me. He's already gone. He is the first fruits. He was, he, yes, he died. Yes, he rose again and he ascended to the Father on high. Give him praise this morning, if you will. Let's look at chapter 23, the book of Exodus, verse 19. The first of the first fruits of your land. I want you to notice these words here. The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring to where? To the house of the Lord your God. He says you shall bring it. Everybody say bring if you would this morning. He didn't say you just, you just do something with it. He said you bring it. Uh, Proverbs 3 and 9 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. Verse 10, So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow 
with new wine. How many of you have vats at your house? I'm just curious. Not very many of you have vats. In the book of Jericho, I want to go there real quick. Chapter 6, we find the account of the destruction of Jericho. Very interesting thought here. After they marched around the city 13 times, remember that, and the wall fell, walls fell flat down. Uh, afterwards, the Bible says in verse 24 of Joshua chapter 6, but they burned, this is so interesting, they burned the city and all that was in it with fire. Only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron, what did they do with it? They put it into the treasury of the house of the Lord. Now, why? I, I just ponder that for just a second. They, they burned everything, but they took the silver and the gold and the bronze and the iron, and what did they do with it? They put it in the treasury of the house of the Lord. Now, why would they do all of that? Why did they do that? Because it was the first city that they conquered as they were coming into the promised land. It was the very first city. God didn't tell them, you go out there and conquer 10 cities, and then you pick out one, you choose one to bless me with. They gave the first one to God. They gave the first one to God. The spoils of Jericho were brought to the house of the Lord. They were given to God. Remember what I said a while ago, the first thing given to God is always blessed. It's a principle, amen? But when Achan, I don't know how, how many of you have ever heard this fellow named Achan, but when Achan took some of it for himself, God called it cursed. Verse 11, Joshua chapter 7, Israel has sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them, for they have even taken some of the, calls it here, the accursed things, and have both stolen and deceived, and they've also put it in among their own stuff. So Achan saw this beautiful Babylonian garment. He he saw all the wealth. He saw this, it was 200 shekels of silver. He saw this, this hunk of gold. How many of you like to have a hunk of gold today? He saw this, this piece of gold, a wedge of gold that weighed 50 shekels, and it looked so good sitting there. And he thought, I want that for myself. And all of a sudden, the thing that was blessed became cursed. Hmm. When we receive something from God, and we don't honor God with it. I have to believe that it becomes cursed. Amen? If you decide to hang on to it, if you decide that, yeah, it looks good sitting in the bank account, and I know this is a really quiet sermon today, quiet audience today, uh, it can make our check registers look real good for a while. Mm -hmm. Have you ever wondered, when, when you read in the book of Genesis about Cain and Abel, have you ever wondered why Abel's offering, uh, why, why God accepted Abel's offering and didn't accept Cain's offering? Let's look at this real quick. Genesis chapter number 4. If you understand the thing about the idea of firstborn and first fruits, I think you'll get this. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Verse number 2. Then she bore again, and this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Question, did God love Abel more than Cain? No, not at all. Did God love shepherds more than farmers? Not at all. Verse 3, and in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Verse number 4, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the, Lord, the Bible says the Lord respected Abel and his offering. Verse 5, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. One is a farmer, one is a rancher. The rancher brings the firstborn. The farmer brings something. We don't know exactly what that was. But God respected one and God did not respect the other. Why is that? God is creator and Lord of all creation. He cannot be pleased with the things that we just give him that are second best. I asked you earlier, who's first in your life? God has to be first in our life, amen? It's amazing, though. I'm going to just tell off a little bit. on. I won't give illustrations. I better not do that. I have been amazed over the years. How, I mean, I, I'm connected to a lot of churches, okay? Been, I've served as presbyter for a lot of years here in our section of churches, or 15 churches in this section, I've been amazed over the years 
how many people want to bless the church with their leftovers. <laughs> uh, I, remember, I remember one instance, as a matter of fact, it wasn't here. It wasn't here, it was in another church. I remember one instance where, where somebody blessed them with their leftovers, and then when they left the church, they wanted their leftovers back even. It's, it, I don't get it. No. By the way, this Cain and Abel thing, uh, that was 2,500 years before the law. Same thing happened in the book of Malachi. Malachi chapter 1 says, You offer defiled food on my... God says this. God says, You offer defiled food on my altar. But you say, In what way have we defiled you? By saying the table of the Lord is contemptible. And when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, the leftovers. God says, Is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and sick, is it, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Can you imagine this if somebody walked up to President Donald Trump? By the way, how many of y'all got this? It's Donald Trump <laughs> danced down. I, I don't know how many of y'all got that, but can you imagine somebody walking up to Donald Trump and saying, you know, I had this, I had whatever it was, I had this something left over and I wanted to bless you with it. You think Donald Trump would be blessed by that? He might act blessed. Take it to Governor Sarah Palin and see what she says. She probably wouldn't be blessed by it. When you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts? Do we really believe that God is impressed with an offering? I've been saying this over and over for years. It has to be, your heart has to be set on God. It's a matter of the heart. But the tithe must be brought first. I want to read real quickly today. It's almost 12 o'clock. Let me share this with you. I want you to key in on the word brought. Brought, bring, words like that. Second Chronicles 31 to 5. As soon as the commandment was circulated, this is the power in bringing. It's the power in bringing. As soon as the commandment was circulated, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of grain and wine, oil. By the way, when... When things are in order, there will always be plenty for ministry. Churches should never exist just to exist. Churches should exist to worship God and to provide ministry. And that's what we try to do here in this church. It says, The children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of grain and wine, oil and honey, and of the produce of the field, and they brought... In abundance, the tithe of everything, and the children of Israel and Judah, who dwelt in the cities of Judah, brought the tithe of oxen and sheep, also the tithe of holy things which were consecrated to the Lord their God. They laid in heaps. What does that say in Mal Let's go back to Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Talked about this recently. I think that's not just uh, physical food, that's that's spiritual food. I think we need some spiritual food. Amen? Amen? We really, really do. You know what? The Bible never tells us. I, I want you to get this today. The tithe. Let me talk about the tithe for just a minute. The tithe was never an offering to be given. It was God's already. It was never an offering to be given. It was God's already. That's why we bring it because it's not ours. We don't give it as if it is ours. We, we bring it because it's his. Amen? I, I, the Bible never tells us to do this and that, whatever we want to with the tithe. God, God says, bring it to me. Amen? Where do we bring it? To the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen, somebody. I want to go real quick. Exodus chapter 13, last verse today. The Bible says, so it shall be. How many of you have ever had kids or have kids? Can I see your hand? Most everyone. So it shall be. Exodus chapter 13, verse 14. When your son asks you in time to come, saying, what is this? That you shall say to him, by strength of hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt out of the house of bondage. 
In other words, it would be like maybe someday their son would come to him and say, you know, Dad, you're, you're really cutting into the prophets here. You know, you've been sacrificing a lot. You've been sacrificing a lot of animals. You're really, you're really cutting into the prophets here, Dad. And Dad, Dad would say, by strength of hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. This part is God's. So I honor him with that today. Would you stand with me this afternoon? Yes, it is afternoon. This is good. Could be a day when your child or your grandchild or someone would say, they might see you writing out a check. And they might say, that's a big check. Why are you writing that out like that? It would be a great opportunity to stop and say, you know, Sally, Billy, whoever, you know, I wasn't always a born-again Christian. I wasn't always saved. My life was in shambles. I did some bad things. I failed, I made mistakes, messed up. This might be somebody say, you know, I was a pretty good guy, pretty good girl, but I recognized one day that my heart was not right because I had sin in my life because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I realized that truth today. God spoke to my heart and said, all have sinned. And so that was me. So you wonder why I'm giving this. You say to the child, you say, because I recognized I was a sinner in Jesus Christ. He illuminated to my heart. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, who illuminated to my heart through his Holy Spirit that there was a way I could be free. There was a way I could be totally forgiven. And so I turned my life over to him. And so I still honor him today. I remember uh, dad, my dad, he passed at 95. He lived a, a long life. But dad didn't get saved until he was uh, early 70s, I guess it was. I want to say maybe 74, 71, 2, 74, somewhere in there. But interesting thing was, I noticed one day that as dad got older and older and older, you could go to the house to visit, and you would find beside his chair, you'd find his glasses, you'd find a Bible there, and you would find tithing envelopes. Mr. Bonnie, you probably taught him that in Sunday school. I don't know. He, he, loved, he loved your class. But he has glasses, he has Bible, he had tithing envelopes. I don't know. I probably never said anything to him about it. I think I mentioned it when I preached his funeral. But that made an impact on my life. Yeah. He's going to honor God. He's going to honor God. God bless my dad. God bless my dad. Dad was what I would, I would say dad was just a wonderful guy uh, all the years that I uh, knew him growing up, uh, me growing up with him. Uh, we were close. Dad was just a good guy. I, I heard him say one, it wouldn't even be considered a bad word these days. I heard him say one, what we would call a bad word, Back in the day, of all my years of growing up, uh, Dad was a pretty good guy. But Dad never was born again, like say, until he got older. But when my dad got saved, his life changed. His countenance changed. His, everything about him changed. Yeah. But he realized my life has been bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I want you to know today, your life is valuable. Your life is very, very valuable to God. He loves you. I, I know I'm a preacher, and maybe some preachers feel like, oh, I'm supposed to say that. God loves you. No, I'm telling you, God really does love you. You say, well, I'm not always good. I'll tell you. 
We thank every one of us today are thankful for forgiveness. But our lives, we need to let God turn us around, set us on the path to following him. We need to be Jesus followers. Jesus followers. Amen. Father God, thank you for this day. Lord, this morning or this afternoon as we come to you, Lord, I thank you that you are the really the only one that can speak to the innermost realms of our hearts. And Lord God, you can tell us there is a way. There is a way, Lord, that seems right to a man. God, the end thereof is death. But Lord, there is a way, and that way is Jesus Christ that brings us to everlasting, eternal life. So Lord God, I pray today that you speak to our hearts. Lord God, should there be one in this building or watching right now that needs forgiveness in their life, Lord God, I pray you speak to them. Conviction of your Holy Spirit, Lord, come upon each one. I want to ask, with no one looking around, are you hearing you'd say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I need forgiveness in my life. Yes. Anybody else? I need forgiveness. I need forgiveness. Anybody else before we pray right now? Anybody else? Thank you, sir. It's a great thing when we're honest with God. Always be honest with God. Amen. Anybody else before we pray? God loves you. The reason you raised your hands is because you recognize his love. We're going to pray today and believe that God would not only forgive us of our sin, but he would also give us the faith to walk out a life of freedom, a life of victory, and a life without sin is found in Christ. Let's pray this prayer today. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now thanking you for forgiveness. We ask you to look upon our hearts, look deep, and Lord God, reveal anything unpleasing to you. Forgive us where we fail you, and Lord, today, we thank you for always being there, for loving us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you for being here today. Uh, next week, we'll have special service. The week after that, um, another special service. Our, our Christmas program will be going on. Make sure and, and have... Uh, Either this week or by next Sunday, have all the gifts for all the kids under the tree. And uh, we'll see you Wednesday night. Where's Rhonda Weiss? Rhonda Weiss, wave real big. If you've not given her your name yet for Wednesday night, we really want you to come. God bless you.